So it's great to hang out with you guys. It's been a lot of fun to get to know each of you over the last couple days. Uh, as Peter mentioned, uh, it's a great event. So thanks to Carrie and Brian for uh, pulling this together and, and uh, glad for each of you that have taken busy time out of your schedule. I know a lot more about Bulgaria now from Val than I did before. <laughs> and uh, I certainly know all Sean's uh, cars in his garage and, and I can go on, but it's, it's great. Um, I'm a Midwest guy, so uh, Liz and I grew up uh, pretty close together. I, I worked in Illinois, I grew up in Indiana, and uh, now reside in Colorado with KPA. So uh, I'll get into KPA in a second, but uh, kind of want to take this uh, chat a little bit uh, up at a higher level. What I'm really good at is uh, team building, building leadership teams, and uh, having been in a number of industries, uh, this is my uh, fifth gig as CEO of a software uh, services company. And so for me, it's uh, coming into the uh, auto market, which I'm young in compared to many of you. I've been here six years now, but I can bring a lot of best practices from some other industries. And uh, I'd like to share some of those that I've noticed now coming to the auto industry, which in some ways is uh, advanced, in other ways uh, is, is, uh, needs, needs help in different areas. And, and there's new nuances that go with dealing with consumers and retail, and so uh, it's an interesting environment. Um, in a previous life, I was um, VP of marketing of a DSL company selling high-speed internet back in 99 and 2000 when things were pretty crazy in the uh, get eyeballs. Uh, we raised uh, $80 million. I had a $36 million bu budget as a marketing guy. So uh, for those of you sitting as an e-commerce director, as an internet marketing manager, as a VP of marketing of your respective dealerships trying to get consumers to buy your cars, I was in your exact same seat 10 years ago uh, trying to get consumers to buy high-speed internet. Now, that's a $40 per month commitment. It's not a $500, $1,000 commitment for buying a car, but there's similar characteristics there as far as how we looked at how we spent our money. And so, um, you know, when I got there, we were spending $1,200 to get one buyer, one, one client to spend $40 a month. That math doesn't work, right? <laughs> you know, we, we had to pay about $20 to the carrier, and so we were netting about five, six dollars per month. The payback on $1,200 of acquisition cost is is uh, infinity. So within six months, I was able to get that down to uh, $120 of of cost instead of $1,200. And that's all the kind of things that we've been talking about for the last two days of looking at each channel that you're spending money on, what's working, what's not working, um, and and looking at your cost of acquisition. Chad was asking that earlier, you know, prove to me that the ROI on my SEO makes sense, right? Uh, and so those are the kind of things. And so it all started with building good teams, building good process around that. And so I'm going to kind of share some of those things and see if that's any of that resonates with you guys. So a lot of what um, we're going to be talking about here is what do you do in-house versus who do you partner with? And if you do partner with somebody as a vendor, you know, picking that partner very wisely. So some of the five steps that I kind of look at when I'm looking at, you know, digital marketing uh, in the auto space and what, what really uh, seems to work and what, what things I can bring from previous experiences. One is you got to empower your team and, and get the right people on your team. So uh, some of you that are working in that position obviously have great experiences and you can really relate to that. Um, I'll tell you another story from one major OEM. <clears throat> 3,400 internet marketing managers uh, in total for this OEM. 1,700 sh uh, s switched out last year in 2011. So I just talked with Ford and they said that over half of their internet marketing managers that have that title uh, changed jobs in 2011. So no matter how much uh, you're training that teammate, no matter how much investment you're making, no matter how much knowledge they have, if they're leaving your organization <laughs> every other year, it's crazy, right? So uh, part of it is getting the right teammate, uh, making them happy, uh, doing the right HR best practices to make sure you've got the right person in the seat, they're happy, they're engaged. And so we talk a lot about it at KPA, about em engaging our employees, and I'm sure you guys, because uh, you're all here at this conference, so you're best practices kind of people, but there's 17,000 other dealers out there that may not be that. So it's something to think about is how do you really work on getting the right person, lowering your employee turnover, 
when I arrived at KPA, we had about a 50% turnover per year, uh, and now we're down to about six, seven, eight percent employee turnover. So, you know, it's a lot about uh, you know the hiring practices. It's about uh, all the rewards, a lot of stuff that uh, Pat talked about yesterday uh, in in rewarding your employees. So, uh, partners, not vendors. Um, you know, I certainly think of the people that we work with at KPA as being um, partners because we sort them out very carefully and spend a lot of time working with them, and I'm sure you guys do. But that's something I'd put a lot of focus on. We'll, we'll spend more time talking about that today. You have a lot of potential partners uh, to work with, a lot of potential vendors, and uh, there's a whole checklist that I kind of go through uh, when we look at who do we want to work with, what's their core values at their, at their company, um, how mature are their products, um, how engaged are they in doing account management versus just the upfront sales process, and, uh, and how does that really relate to the value that I want to get out of that relationship. Um, I'm an engineer by training, so for me it's uh, all about metrics, and, and if you can measure it, you can manage it. So, um, you know, I know Mark, when he's out working with dealerships, right, first thing you want to look at is, okay, what's your strategy, where are you headed, what are you trying to accomplish, what are the metrics that you measure, have you thought about this, have you thought about that, right? So um, it's one thing to talk theoretical, and it's another thing like Brian showed this morning with some of the napkin numbers, right? If you can look at numbers and start really analyzing what's my cost per visitor, and you're seeing one's costing me you know, 20 to $60, and one's costing me 2 to $3, you know, I know where I'm gonna spend a little bit more of my money at if I, if I need to get more visitors. Um, commitment for long-term success. So this is this is an area that uh, can be a little frustra frustrating in this industry. <clears throat> the industries I came from before, um, there seemed to be a lot more loyalty to a partner once you've figured out that you had a good working relationship with that you know software vendor. In in the auto space, you know if it's a monthly basis, and so there's this urgency to if it's not working this month, let's throw that guy out with the bathwater and let's get in a new guy and let's give him a try. Well, that didn't work for six months, okay, let's get the next guy. And all of a sudden you see dealers that are cycling through different vendors, you know, four or five vendors in a three year period, and it's crazy. So one is I would ask, you know, from my perspective at least, to slow down and pick, pick, pick that vendor partner wisely, but then when you do pick them and you do pick the right internet marketing manager or the right e-commerce director or the right VP of marketing, then make sure you make the investment and give them a chance to be successful, right? It's, it doesn't happen overnight. Think you can't move results on uh, in the Google world overnight, so you have to kind of be a little bit patient and make sure you got the right strategy and then execute on that strategy. And then culture for best practices. So again, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, constantly learning. Pat talked about that. Brian, you know, Kerry, this is what first class educators are all about is constantly giving a chance for us to, to share best practices. And so that all starts in the in, in your organization. You know, we can't depend upon our OEMs to educate us. I mean, they're worried about their, their mission and that's different than your franchise. That's different than your group. And um, things are changing frequently now, especially in this digital marketing world, that being able to interact, like at this conference, hear what Peters has to say from Google, you know, bounce some ideas off of other smart people in the industry that are peers of yours, um, and then go out and get best practices. And that's not just for you, but that's for your teammates too. So they know every day when they come to work, okay, how am I going to be the most efficient? What's the best tool that I can use? What's my resource I can go to? So for, for our company, the KPA, I, I've surrounded each of us at the executive level with a peer group. So I'm part of Vistage. Vistage is a CEO roundtable group. For those leading your organization, like Chad or, or some of the rest of you, it's a great organization to hear peer-to-peer -peer from other CEOs what they're doing in their organization to retain employees, to do the right M&A activity, to do the right sales, leadership skills, you know, whatever the to hot topic is for the day. Uh, for my CFO, he's in a CFO uh, financial group, and so he meets with five or six CFOs once a month to compare notes on, on regulatory issues and you know, all the kind of things that CFOs have to worry about as far as raising capital and, and so on. Um, my VP of marketing is in a CMO marketing group, a chief marketing officer group. So again, it's, it's a way for them. I, I know the auto industry's got some great 
opportunities with 20 groups, you know, at different levels. So you guys already may be in a 20 group. That may be working great. But I'd encourage you to think about who, who in your team has or has not got a peer that they can talk to about some of the stuff that we're sharing today that might be relevant to their job. And, and how do they get that information? So a little bit about KPA real quickly, just uh, some of you may know of us and some of you may not. Uh, KPA was founded uh, 26 years ago. Uh, our focus was on compliance. Uh, what does compliance mean? Uh, if you think about your dealership uh, using best practices around uh, things with EPA and OSHA. So safety, uh, making sure your environmental issues are taken care of. And so we have roughly 3,500 dealers nationwide that we work with specifically on our environment and safety solutions. Uh, we serve 70% of all the dealers in California. We serve about 25% of the whole U.S. Uh, in that capacity. Uh, we have the seven of the top ten dealer groups, so Penske, Group One, AutoNation, uh, Asbury, VT, those are all clients of ours and at a 100% level of all their dealerships. So we have a software platform that where we collect data, we're going out looking for 700 things in your dealership to make sure that we're on the straight and narrow. We're, we're going to make sure it's safe, we're going to improve your safety uh, records, and we're going to lower your workers' comp expense. So I just met with Roger Penske. And uh, we were able to lower his insurance uh, workers' comp expense from about $5 million per year to 800000 So we're saving him about $4.2 million per year. So it's a pretty good ROI there, and he's pretty happy with those kind of results. So that's just an example of what KPA is up to. That's probably not your focus here, but just to give you a little background on who we are. Um, uh, about four years ago, we acquired a HR platform uh, that's a very powerful solution for managing, kind of focusing on how you hire uh, from the job application perspective, making sure you do the right steps before you hire. You know, if you're going to do a drug test and background check, make sure you have a conditional offer out. Uh, and then once you have that person on board, be getting all the paperwork signed in an electronic file, uh, making sure they look at the employee handbook and sign off that they've read it. And then performance reviews on a timely basis. And then if you do terminate, you've got all your ducks in a row if there's something going on. And then lastly, we bought uh, TK Car Sites about a year ago. TK is a website, SEO, and social media company. So we're very active now in the digital marketing space. And we're trying to bring the culture that we've had at KPA, where we have a 98% retention rate of our clients, to TK and bring really good service to this market. I think we, what we're seeing in the digital marketing space, we have some of the, some of the you know, peers that I have in the room here provide great service. And, and, but, but that's kind of a crapshoot once you get outside this room as to who's doing great work and who's not. So we're all about you know, under promise and over deliver and, and bring that great long-term relationship uh, to, to the table. So you know, back to uh, focusing on number two on the list there was really what do you do, how do you pick your vendors? And I really want to put some time and, and effort into focusing on that. Uh, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, just with the amount of information that Peter shared this morning, you're, you know, my, my head's swimming and I'm kind of in the SEO space, right? So I'm sure some of you that may or may not be uh, living and dying by your, your SEM and SEO strategy every day are thinking, okay, I gotta go talk to somebody about thinking about what's coming down the pipe with, uh, you know, distance uh, on my smartphone and, and how people are doing searches there. So the point is that uh, you're trying to sell cars, service cars, finance cars, provide parts for cars. There's a lot of different segments of your business. It's a very complex business. And so uh, some, of the, some of those areas you can do internally very well. And some of those things, depending on the size of your organization, you may want to farm out and have partners help you with that. And so then picking that partner wisely uh, so their focus is, is uh, really where you know, there's a lot of focus needs to be put. 